Hi, I'm Fox. I'm Raggable. And uh, welcome to the Two Smart Guys show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a title anymore, apparently. I don't know. What manuals won't tell you? But we will. <laughs> And this is the third in our series of the free NAS box. Yeah, we, we set one up, we set one up to use our sync, and we're going to take it a step further uh, in setting one up to use Unison, which is um, an implementation of, uh, of our sync almost. It's, it's a file synchronization tool that uses our sync's differential algorithm for file so transfer. So this one syncs both ways, right? Yes. Okay. So it uses uh, Secure Shell to do all this transferring stuff and setting up and rsync for the data transfer. So it's kind of a culmination of all those other things that we covered before. So instead of setting rsync up with a whole bunch of other scripts for pulling and pushing and things like that, this is what Unison does. This is what Unison is for. Hmm. So, so this lets you sync multiple machines to your FreeNAS box, right? Uh, yeah, that's whatever you want to load Unison on, it can sync whatever you want, really. Awesome. And it's not syncing two, it's making sure that uh, both sets are identical to each other. So if you've got uh, a person over here who makes a change, and then syncs it with that set, and then you come in, you sync your set with that, there's a newer update on the, on the free NAS box, so it pulls down and updates yours. But it also, it's a double-edged sword, it does cascade deletes by default, I found out. So if you dig into Unison's... Uh, manual and the command line switches and things like that, I'm sure you can find a way around that to set it up so it doesn't do deletions. Uh, one of our other guys, uh, Couch Guy, expressed that his son likes to randomly delete stuff, so <laughs> that's not something he was interested in because then that would, you know, screw everything up. Yeah, well. But, I mean, this is just, I mean, what I've, the setup that I have is a fairly simple setup. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to enable SSH access because uh, Unison works over SSH. So you click on the services menu, check the enable box, save and restart, and SSH has been enabled. After that, we now have to grant uh, a user access to use SSH. So you can create a new user or edit an existing user. Go to the shell drop-down box and select your choice. Bash if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> save your user. And then after that, uh, we're now set up to SSH, SSH into the box. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to enable uh, SSH for public key authentication. What is SSH? Secure Shell. Ah. Okay, so with public key authentication, um, if your user has a password assigned to it, every time you try to use Unison or Shell into your box, you'll be asked for your password. Um, if you're trying to script for automation, that's a pain in the ass. That You can't do that. So another way to get around that password scheme is to essentially upload a set of keys to the server or to the free NAS box and load it on your machine. So when you connect to the box, it'll say, do you have this key? And you say, yes, I have this key. All right, you're authenticated to connect using this. So it's a way to automate that. And the first thing that we need to do is actually generate that key. Gotcha. And so the, t the command line that we're going to use is uh, SSH keygen. So go ahead and open up terminal and type in that command, SSH keygen. And go ahead and accept the defaults, no password, no passphrase, because again, we want to automate this. We don't want to type in a passphrase. And this has generated a RSA uh, public and private key uh, set. The uh, public one is stored in id underscore rsa.pub. The private one is id underscore rsa. The public one is the, what we'll be uploading to the server, and the private one is what will be uh, held on the machine actually syncing to the free NAS box. Um, the public one is unsecure. I mean, it's essentially meant to be passed out, but the private one needs to be secured. So put it into a directory that you, you only have access to and don't hand it out, you know, yada, yada, yada. Um, after that, we're going to go ahead and upload the public one to the free NAS box. But before we can do that, we have to create uh, a SSH directory, .ssh on the free NAS box, in the home folder for the user that has the shell access. In my instance, the home user has uh, a certain path. And so uh, in that path, you create the SSH folder, .ssh. So you go ahead and we'll SSH 
into the free NAS box using that user, ask for my password, and then we're going to make this .ssh directory. And then we need to give it the appropriate permissions. In this instance, it's 700, which corresponds to uh, the owner has read, write, read, write, execute, and the group and the others, basically anybody, have no access. Now, we'll go ahead and close out, and we're going to upload it using SCP. And What's the SCP? Secure copy. Oh. The uh, copy command in Unix environments is CP. Oh, okay. You can also use F SFTP in this instance as well. Either one will work. So we're going to copy the local public, which is in the folder of uh, your home folder, dot SSH ID underscore RSA dot pub to the free NAS box, which has the syntax of the user and the IP or DNS entry, colon, then the URL or the uh, path, which is again the home directory dot SSH. And the, what's different here is that it's not going to be named ID underscore RSA dot pub. It's going to be named authorized keys. Ask for a password again, and it's been uploaded. And we're going to go ahead and add shell back into the box. And this time we're going to change permissions on that authorized keys file. And we're going to give it a 600 tag or 600 mask, which is uh, read and write, I believe. I can't remember. For the owner, but the, the most essential part here is uh, the group and the others can't read it, can't look at it. So, so it's making it private. Yeah, and, and, and this is important because um, when SSH is trying to accept a public key uh, authentication scheme, it will check permissions on the .ssh folder to make sure that that meets its requirements. If, it's, if, if it isn't 700 or out of whack or something, it will not accept your private key because it's not secure in the box. So we change that to read and write for the owner only. And now public key authentication has been set up so we can automate unison syncing with a cron script later on. We now have to give the mount point the appropriate permissions because that's another thing the SSH will check. Yeah. And you want to make sure that that mount point is set to the user for owner. I mean, the owner of that mount point is the user that you're using to sync with. And the group can be a special group if you want, if you set it up. But then the other thing to note is we're going to uncheck the right box for the group and the others. Those stay unchecked. Go ahead and click Save. And then Apply Changes. And now all the permissions have been appropriately set. And now we can go in and enable Unison and just simply check that box and then browse to the root, or essentially the home folder for that user that you will be sharing. And the interesting thing about this is that don't drill down into, like, say, your pictures folder or your documents folder. Because the way that Unison is working is that it's, you're sharing the root level of your, you're syncing the root level of your home directory. And then you create profiles on the client that will tell Unison what part of that home directory to sync. Um. And that's how it differs in our sync. Our sync for every single folder you want to uh, sync with on the server is where you enable that module. So our sync, you configure the sharing on the server side with Unison, uh, more on the client side with the profiles. You go ahead and save and restart. And now Unison has been enabled. And so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to download the Mac client. And this is a port of uh, Unison for the Mac. Prior to this, you had to download uh, Mac ports or Mac Fusion or something like that. This is a version that's been spe specifically compiled for Mac OS X. Uh, if you're using Linux or Windows, there are versions of Unison out there for those platforms. But for right now, I'm just covering uh, my setup, which is Mac OS X. So you go to that URL, download the latest GUI universal binary, save it. 
mount that DMG file. And then after that opens, go ahead and drag the Unison application to a look, you know, a point of your choosing, application folder, desktop, wherever you need it to be. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and open Unison. And the first thing that we're going to do with Unison is install the command line utility, which will enable us to set up the script to automate it. So click on Unison, and then click on uh, Unison in the menu, and install command line tool. Click yes, it'll ask for your password because this is a system protected uh, location slash user slash bin. And then after that, we need to go back into terminal because when Unison installs this command line utility, it doesn't set the executable bit on the actual program. So until you set that, you can't actually run it. It's oh. like it's just like a regular file until you give it that executable oh, bit. Right, right, right. So open up terminal, cd slash user slash bin, and sudo change mod seven five five Unison, and that the sudo command is elevating you know, to... Uh, Any admin, right? Yeah, yeah, because this is uh, a system-protected directory. And the 755 bit is uh, read-write executable for the owner, which is uh, root, or, and then the 55 is read and execute for the group and others. Others is essentially everybody. And that way we can actually run Unison. Asks for your password. And now we can actually run Unison in command line mode. So the next thing we're going to set up is the actual profile. I have a test directory on my desktop and a test directory in my home share mount. So we open up Unison, click on the new button, give it a profile name, and type in the full path to that uh, to what you want to sync. In my instance, it's on my desktop. Then specify uh, the URL and the user and the file, location or folder. Save it. Go ahead and uh, double click on it to run it. And it'll connect, it'll run, it'll determine what needs to be synced. And we can see uh, that it's going to be downloading or uploading to the FreeNAS box those files that were on my desktop. And that's a good visual way to make sure that your profile works and that it's set up properly. And now with that profile set up, we can go ahead and create uh, a script to run Unison with that profile. Uh, that way, you can always make changes within the, G within the GUI and uh, the command line will be updated appropriately. Oh, nice. That way you don't have to sit there and you know, create a long command line. Because otherwise that, that in command line form is about you know, 20 characters long. Nice. <laughs> to run it in text mode, we give it this, uh, this switch dash UI text, which will not bring up the GUI at all. The next switch is dash batch, which will run in an automated mode without prompting the user what to do. Without that one, uh, Unison will run and ask you on every single file, do you want to sync this one? Do you want to sync this one? Do you want to sync this one? How about this one? This one's different. What do you want to do with this? And yeah. so that defeats the point of automating it. So with dot bash or dash batch, there's a set of uh, default actions that it will take, like downloading and uploading. You'd have to research this more to find out how it behave, behaves exactly, because I'm not entirely sure. So <laughs> if something gets deleted accidentally, don't blame me. And then the next one you want to do is the name of the profile. And you can see how it will automatically connect and automatically prop propagate updates and deletes. Now we want to actually take that command line and put it into a script. So open up TextMate text edit, whatever text editor you have, and type in that same command line. Save it with a .sh extension. Union, unison, <laughs> underscore test, .sh. But now we also need to go into that directory and set the executable bit on that shell huh. so that it can be run as well. So again, change mod, Seven uh, four four, which is read, write, execute for me, read for everybody else. And now it's actually executable. So now we can go ahead and edit our cron tab with cron tab dash e. 
And you can see that my iPhoto one is still in there. And we're going to add another one underneath this. And my default editor when I do this is V. So I uh, push I on the keyboard to go into insert mode, enter. And then uh, once again, the formatting is the minutes, hour, and then day, month, year, whatever. Go to the wiki. Because <laughs> I'm only concerned about the, uh, most of the time, uh, the minutes and the hour, which are mm -hmm. the first two bits. So this one's running at, I believe, uh, 10 o'clock mm -hmm. or 9 o'clock. And then the iPhone one's being run at 9.30. Gotcha. So and then after the, um, the date and the time that you want it to run, uh, type in the full path to that shell access. Uh, make sure to escape any spaces out like I have with the, with the backslash because that's a special character. And then after that, hit escape to, to um, get out of insert mode. And then do a colon, WQ for write and quit, and that will save the cron tab. And it's now been scripted and set up. Cool. So now you got Unison just automatically running in the background? Yeah. There's probably an easier way to edit your cron tab. There might be a tool out there. Look, just Google around for a cron tab editor for Mac OS X so you don't have to mess around with terminal or V. <laughs> Because some people might be a little uncomfortable <laughs> with that. And if you if you want to, you can go to our website, twosmartguys.com, mm -hmm. and we'll have the actual show notes, so it's step by step. Yes, all the uh, all you know the time. commands, uh, the URLs, everything like that will be uh, in the show notes. Yeah, so twosmartguys slash unison will take you directly to. That <laughs> <one>. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> um, and if you enjoy the show, uh, we're, every Wednesday night, we, we do it live at justintv.com mm -hmm. slash two smart guys. 1030 Mountain Standard Time. And then we usually post it uh, sometime in the weekend. Yeah, depending on how the shoot goes. <laughs> and uh, if you want to support our show, um, zazzle.com is, is willing to give you guys a discount when you use code two smart guys. Uh, on an order of how much or more? Uh, $50 or more, you save a um, pretty good percent. Pretty good percent. You're not willing to commit, huh? Right down there. Right down there. <laughs> and of course, we have DVDs available of, mm -hmm. our, of a lot of our past shows. Donate, the, uh, you know, ten dollars yeah. or more, or something yeah. like that. Get you know, a set of DVDs. Helps yeah. us keep our helps us keep us going. And uh, of course, at our website, we've also got more help available at uh, two smart guys slash form. Mm -hmm. We'll see you guys next time. Next, next time. Yeah. Good luck. This has been a Two Smart Guys production.